and all kinds of stuff. Thank you. And uh, so I looked out, how many kids in a row? So I saw five or six hands. So I was like, well, maybe I could be a little racier this time. So, um, and I say, you know, if I use profanity, you, know, you guys all butt. Remember that you lead by example and that the future is in our hands. And if we really want to make something happen, you do it. So say we all. So say we all. So say we all. So say we all. And on that note. You know, I wouldn't be George Decay without all of you. It's your dedication to the, to the show and to uh, all the various generations of Star Trek that's made Star Trek into this incredible 46-year-old phenomenon. So thank you all for all your support and undying love. When I first started with uh, the uh, pilot of Star Trek, uh, we knew we had a quality show. The writing was all there. The ideas were all there. And I was chatting with Jimmy Dewan, and I said, I smell quality with this show. It is going to be a show that we're going to be proud of. Jimmy Dewan would play Scott. So, uh, Jimmy Dewan. But then I added on, I don't think we'll last too long. Good shows don't last on television. Which would explain why the Partridge family was on longer than Star Trek. Yes. <laughs> Good shows don't last that long. But it what we didn't know well, was that we had adversaries called NBC programming executives. <laughs> they aborted us after three seasons. So it did run three seasons. Can three you seasons. imagine? We're all here 46 years later for a show I would think most of us could probably still do dialogue from. It, it, it was only on three seasons. We could quote the show, and most of us, a little bit better than Shatner. That's just a personal <laughs> opinion. Uh, no big deal. Don't get upset with me. He would say some outrageous things. Howard? Howard saying outrageous things. Imagine, imagine that. And the only way you can respond to those statements were, oh my. <laughs> Do you think that your shows and shows like it of the past actually shape the technology of the future? You know, I think Gene Roddenberry, who created Star Trek, was a change agent. Because with his imagination, he visualized the future and made that a goal, a benchmark. And other change agents, like the inventors, the engineers, the scientists, the technicians, you know, took that as a goal to strive for, and they, with their genius, made that a reality. So it takes someone with the kind of um, imagination and creativity that Gene Roddenberry had to place a goal in the future, and then that future becomes our commonplace, our everyday, amazing phenomenon. I, I, I believe you are correct. Start talking. Astounding. No chords attached to it. Today, in our lives, that amazing science fiction device has become a real nuisance in our world. 
you know, we are living in a science fiction world. And it's just a short off. It takes pictures, we make uh, restaurant reservations, we buy movie tickets. It's an amazing device, and we are now in that science fiction world. Do you uh, the, the last scene of all Star Trek uh, uh, stories take place on the uh, bridge of the Enterprise and the captain gets up from his seat and looks up at that uh, view screen but this time there's that giant view of Captain Sulu there and uh, Captain Kirk essentially sit, looks up to that figure and says Thank you for saving my ass. <laughs> and Captain Sulu looks down and says, in essence, good to see you in action one more time, Captain. <laughs> and he smiles and he roars off. And you see the great ship, Starship Excelsior. And uh, McCoy is looking after that ship and says, by God, that's a big ship. <laughs> But Scotty, with a twinkle in his eyes, says, I am not so big as a captain, I think. Now that's a Captain Sulu movie. That's a Captain Sulu movie right there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there are lots of players coming to Thank <laughs> you.